some what seemed to be some small medical decisions that it changed the consequences of that revolution in, in U.S. relationships with that part of the world. It wasn't so much, I think, the death of the Shah as it was the way his health issues were handled. Well, there was a lot of secrecy and even conspiracy. And I have no idea if the Shah ever made a decision himself. The man was getting sicker and sicker. What happened here is you had too many cooks spoiling the broth. That there were huge political ramifications. The whole thing is a book of my practice. It's sad that a person with so much power, so much money, couldn't get the care that he needed because of his political needs and the political situation of the American government and the Iranian government and everybody else involved. There was a set of decisions made during a very brief period of time that have led us to where we are now with these decades now of sanctions that have affected our relationships, well, and, and Iran's relationship with, with the rest of the world. You have just watched the trailer for A Dying King, The Shah of Iran. Babak Kalhor is the writer and director, and he is our first guest. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. When I look at this documentary, I realize, and I was born in probably around junior high school around that time, I realized that I didn't understand the full story, and that's what your documentary tells me is a full story that's been unheard. So why do you think that's important? Well, it's not just that you haven't heard it. I didn't know the story, and most people didn't know the medical story of the Shah of Iran. Uh, we all knew the revolution happened. He came out of the country and he died. Um, and I had heard that uh, you know he died of cancer, but we didn't know the special circumstances around his death. And you know that's what this documentary is that we did in 2018, A Dying King, and it covers the medical story of the Shah of Iran. And you know, doing this, uh, discovering how the Shah died and how come we didn't know about it, I kind of went to the next conclusion. What else don't we know about the 1979 revolution uh, and the history of Iran? So that's our next project that we're working on is, is the history of Iran in the 20th century and how we got to this point uh, politically uh, that, you know, the current troubles with the United States and Iran and Iran and the rest of the world. I think this is really interesting that you're telling me this story because we both grew up during that time and you're really learning your own history and why it impacted you so much. So you have that first question. Now walk us through the steps it takes to come up with how you will do this documentary, how you will produce this documentary, because it really is an enlightening story, but it lets us know how much we missed. So how do you start there? Because you get some of the doctors, you get people from that time to talk about it. Well, the documentary, uh, we, 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 you know, A Dying King, the first piece that we did, yes. uh, I was working at a radio station here in LA. Uh, it was a Farsi-speaking radio station and um, was producing programming and uh, we did a series of programs with a friend of mine. She's a surgeon here in LA. Her name is Dr. Shireen Tofai. And we did a series of medical programs pertaining to the Iranian people, like how esophageal cancer affects Iranians, how breast cancer affects Iranians, how heart disease affects Iranians. And one of the programs we did was with a gentleman named Dr. Leon Morgenstern. He was the chief of surgery at Cedar sinai in the 60s and 70s. He was one of the preeminent spleen specialists in the world. And uh, he was in his 90s and had written an article called The Shah's Spleen, uh, which kind of outlined the medical care of the Shah as he went through all these countries. When the Shah left Iran, he went to Egypt, Morocco, Bahamas, Mexico, New York, Texas, Panama, and Egypt again, and he died. So we. Uh, I, I was, he was, I did this interview with him and I had so many questions. Yes. So I kept going back, uh, he, he was at Cedar sinai and he was 92 years old. So I kept going back every week with more and more questions. Yes. 
And at one point, I think he was kind of getting tired of me. He was a very nice gentleman, <laughs> but he was just kind of getting tired of coming down to work because of me. So he said, young man, this is your history. Uh, why don't you go follow it up? So he put me in touch with all these doctors and I ended up going and talking to the Mexican doctors and the Panamanians and the Iranians and you know, went to France and traveled around the world for this story. And from that story, figuring out what happened to him medically, it brought up a lot of more questions about what happened during the 1979 revolution. And I've been doing, this started 15 years ago. We have probably 50, 60 interviews, not only with doctors, we talked to historians, academics, uh, people that worked in government, and we try to cover uh, the history of Iran in the 20th century to see how we got to this point today mm -hmm. with the demonstrations and the uprisings of the women for human rights, for religious freedoms. And uh, it's a very fascinating story. Uh, and it's been told in pieces, it's been told by, in books, by academics, but we're trying to put this the whole thing together. You know, Iran went to two world wars, five upheavals were changes of regime. Uh, we were occupied, we were almost divided. Uh, we had devastation during World War I and World War II where millions of people died. Uh, we've had revolutions. We went from two monarchies uh, to a constitutional revolution to a theocracy now. And it, this is kind of a, a way for me to understand what happened and you know how it brought that uh, kid to the United States in 1978 as a seven-year-old coming here, which I really didn't understand a lot of the things that were going on. So this is kind of a, a voyage of self-discovery for myself that I'm sharing. Well, and, and really what you're doing is you're finding your own roots, but on top of that, you're educating all of us about it too, so that we can change our perspective because I see that if I had to come up with one theme after watching your documentary is that we need to change our perspective. Am I right or wrong? Well, true. It, it was important for me, you know, I was born in Iran, but I was raised an American. I've been raised here since I was eight years old. And this story is important for Americans to, to learn because, you know, we have problems. We might be entering into a hot war with a country that we know very little about. And even our own history with the Shah and with Iran is murky. Uh, but I think it was, it's important uh, as an international story for everyone to know this uh, because it could, it could help us down the road. You know, we have a, uh, a lot of the people I talk to, they say we have a bipolar policy with respect to Iran. We have presidents that want to negotiate with them and lift sanctions and, and uh, you know, uh, create, create a good relationship. Yes. Then we have presidents that come in that want to bomb them and, you know, uh, it, it's a complete different story. Uh, I think knowing this history will help us in how we relate to Iran and, and as Americans and help us you know, better understand what our government is doing with them, if it's the right thing or right, thing, wrong, right or wrong thing. And you talk about that understanding, and I think that's really important with how you actually tell this story. So my question to you is, um, because you did this for yourself and you needed to enlighten yourself, thank goodness for this doctor that said, learn your history. But you found that a lot of people, after you uh, have this documentary out there, a lot of people are interested in this history. So you are on the path of telling us more. So tell us about that next phase of what you're doing right now. Well, the next phase of it is, is really, it's a monumental task because it's putting together a history of Iran through the last century, through the 20th century, mm -hmm. which involves, it starts with the constitutional revolution that we had in 1906, uh, which was unheard of in the Middle East. You know, people rising up for, for their rights, for uh, uh, freedoms, standing up against oppressive government. This is 1905, so the whole, series of reforms that came throughout the century with following leaders, it started there, that idea started there. Then our story takes us to World War I and the devastation that Iran suffered. Uh, there was the Russians, the British, the Ottomans, the Germans, they were, they were fighting on Iranian soil. Iran was a failed state. It was a very, very a dismal form of government. Millions of people died from famine, from, from hoarding, from a drought, from war. Uh, and that led us to uh, coming out of the World War 
and the rise of the Pahlavi dynasty, which is the father of the Shah. And, and he was a Cossack officer, uh, uh, you know, and he came in 1921, there was a coup, he came in as a war minister, he became prime minister, and by 1925, he became king. And we follow his reign, um, you know, a lot of the good that he did for Iran, modernizing Iran, changing, changing the government, changing the structure, uh, which takes us into World War II. And uh, his closeness with, with the Germans uh, kind of brought about another change where the Allies, the British, uh, the Americans and the Russians occupied Iran in 1941 and used the country as a transport corridor for Russia in his fight with Hitler. So that was a period of devastation where we were occupied again from 1941 to 1945. And after that came about a constitutional period where we have uh, you know, Prime Minister Mossadegh and you hear about that, the nationalization of the oil. And it led to 1953, which was another coup, which was orchestrated by the CIA and MI6, uh, with a lot of help from the Iranian people, uh, to overthrow that 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 regime. That that uh, you know, people call it democratic, but I would say it was more of a constitutional regime with a prime minister, which goes into the reign of the Shah. Uh, now the Shah went from 1953 to 1978, and we follow his reign. Uh, how he you know, rose up as a shy young prince to become king. And you know, years later, he was declaring himself the king of kings and, and changing the world order, uh, which leads us to the uh, Islamic Revolution of 1978. And we look at his reign, the mistakes he did, uh, the reforms that were never made, uh, which led to that, that revolution. And our story kind of goes a little bit past that, how after the 79 revolution, the, the constitution was formed, it was pushed on the people, and the beginning of that regime, and the hostage crisis, which everybody in the US remembers, and breaking relations with the United States and America, uh, United States and Iran, and the sanctions which last till today. So we kind of get into how the rupture in relations happened, and. Uh, hopefully understanding this story, it, it, it gives us a way forward because you see what's going on in Iran. People are demonstration, dr demonstrating, the women are losing their lives, their freedoms, and it, this kind of gives us a primer of, of how we got to this point. And maybe if we do get to a point where there's a change of regime or a vacuum in power, uh, we have a little bit of uh, the, you know, hindsight and what happened before and use that. Believe it or not, our time has gone by quickly. But before we end our conversation, can you just tell us how we can follow you out there so that we can support as you move into these next phases of production? And then when you're done, will you come back and talk about your new documentary? I would love to, I would love to come back. Um, uh, a Dying King is on YouTube. Uh, we have some of our interviews there. Hundreds of thousands of people watch it, uh, you know, th what we have there. And uh, I don't have the title for the new film. We're working as an, on a documentary and also a script format. So it's two new projects that are coming out at the same time. But you do have a website. Uh, adyingking.com. Perfect. That's where we'll find you for now. And then once that changes, we'll put it out there on social media for our guest. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much and come back to hear more about passion-driven purpose with Nicholas Ellerson.